Um, I've got 13 questions here, but um, I'll open it up to the floor. I'm, I may do a bit of taking a couple and then um, putting it to the most relevant speaker. I may put it straight to a speaker if you've got a particular question, so let's just see how it works. Um, we won't know many of you. Uh, you might know each other, but it's useful for the speakers and for everybody else in the room if people could just identify themselves using uh, whatever titles they may wish to use. Um, and Douglas joins us at a very... So I love this. Say your bit, go, and then come back to the questions. <laughs> this is the boring bit of us talking. <laughs> Sorry, it seems very rude of me, doesn't it? <laughs> <coughs> Who'd like to <coughs> ask something of our panel first? Uh, just out of interest, I, uh, I work for a little organisation called the Independent Network, trying to support independent candidates in the next uh, in the next general election and the London local elections. And I'm actually very shocked to hear that really there was very little addressed of the power of political party and the web system uh, in the discussion about how particularly how the House of Commons is working and how you know the MPs are working whilst there are lots of things directed to um, to quangos and that kind of stuff rather than the actual responsibilities of MPs to get up and do something if they don't like what the executive is doing but far too scared of the whip system and their own jobs and their positions. Um, the uh, and heartened to hear that, you know, uh, up until one point, Ms. Toynbee was talking about um, uh, a reduction or, uh, in political party control. And then looking at open primaries, <coughs> primaries, I think even if you do look, and I think it's unfortunate that we're looking to America to learn um, lessons from democracy when we've been going for so long. Um, but we're actually looking at open primaries, which generally are, I can imagine if the Tory party did so. Um, uh, group of old blokes with blue ties saying how blue they are and asking us to vote as, you know, in, in accordance with how strongly they are, how, how strongly they align to particular party values, which is definitely what we see in the US. My question really is, and I think we are massively under threat with the reform of the House of Lords and crossbenchers and seeing a greater, uh, 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 the potential of constitutional reform of actually a decimation of independence of MPs and a greater, uh, and party party politics actually taking greater control, should we go to an elected chamber? And should we look at AV rather than AV plus or any other thing? So I'd actually like to, and also looking at, we do have two independents who are elected independents when it comes, which are better than the BNP or the Greens or all the small parties. There's very little, very little support in general, people recognizing Ken Livingston obviously was represent, uh, elected as an independent. We talk about independent minded MPs, but very little support for independent MP, and people are actually able to serve their constituencies as Doug Davis, Richard Taylor do, and as Ken Livingston did stand himself, so I wonder what they see okay. as a position on independence. Very clear, thank you. I'll take another one. Gentleman at the front here. <coughs> um, <coughs> my name's David Hughes. Um, I'll, I'll declare, I'll out myself as being the um, regional secretary for the Liberal Democrats in the southwest of England, um, and say something about um, primaries and membership. Um, um, I personally am a convert to the open primaries, and I think actually the Conservative Party deserves some congratulations for having brought it about. I think I'm right in saying that so far the beneficiaries have both, have, uh, both been women who have been successful in, I think, Topless and Gosport. So, you know, let's be fair, it's not necessarily going to end up producing sort of uh, grey haired, white, um, you know, male, middle aged candidates. Um, I think one of the ways around the quite fairly identified problem about the cost though is in general elections as you know um, most of us probably know there is the pre free post facility which allows <coughs> to communicate at least once with every voter in the constituency and I would have thought there might be a case for arguing that you could introduce a free post into um, uh, or make it available for those political parties conducting primaries, say any party in a constituency which has saved its deposit at the previous general election should be able to have a free post facility to operate an open primary, might get round the otherwise quite justifiable concerns about finance. Um, secondly, on the question of party members, and I think it was Ben at the end said it would be great if we went back to the days where the parties had you know a million plus members and so on, what I detect, um, and this is perhaps a product of the disillusion with Parliament, is that a lot of people are happy to engage in politics, whether in single issue groups, or even to do things for political parties as they see a general election on the horizon. 
but they somehow think that actually becoming a member is a more significant act, uh, sort of signing away your body and soul, or in some ways saying, yes, I support every single thing this political party stands for, so I'm reluctant to do that. And uh, I quite often find that there are people who are willing to undertake to do all sorts of things, say between now and a general election, or take time off, um, take some time out from a, a course if they're young people in particular, but ask them to um, actually sign on the dotted line in quite that old traditional way, and they're not reluct they're very reluctant to do it. I don't think it's for financial reasons. I think it's because the nature of what they're being they think they're being expected to say in terms of you know I think they imagine they've got to say that they therefore believe in everything a political party happens to be advocating. So I don't think we will rapidly deal with that problem, but therefore perhaps there might be a case for looking even further at the American example and having some sort of system of registered supporters that might prevent some abuses of a primary system of people crossing over um, and might actually be a satisfactory way to engage people who otherwise don't actually want to call themselves a member of a political party. I mean, is there any more questions on this aspect, primaries and uh, the parties generally? No, should we take these two? Because I think there, there's quite a lot here. I mean, the work we did at the Power Inquiry, I think, in, if I can just abuse my position as the chair, <laughs> why not, um, showed that actually uh, for younger people, when they join something, when they join Amnesty, I mean, it's an emotional thing that they do, and they don't seem to have the same thing with parties. But I think even more fundamentally, parties forgot about their members. They didn't need them so much. They could go over their heads and communicate directly with, with um, people they wanted to vote for them. They didn't need, they thought the old-fashioned campaigning of leaflets and all that. I know you guys do it a lot in the South West. But they didn't seem to think they needed it so much. So, and, and crucially, the big parties, I think, felt their members were a bit annoying when they tried to influence their policies, etc., uh, etc. Et and the research we did showed that actually um, members of political parties felt they had least influence over their party than someone who was a member of a pressure group or the media. So actually, people are quite rational, I think. If people think joining the party isn't going to actually bring them any benefit, then why should they? Um, but let's start with you, Douglas, as you're, you're, you were first to speak. I mean, could you answer both questions on the independent candidates, which I find quite interesting, and then on the party question? 